So how do we treat discoid lupus when it affects the scalp? There are several different treatments available, and this is when you want to have a plan at home on things that you can do to help out. The drug of choice for localized uh, discoid lupus of the scalp or anywhere on the body is cortisone cream. And we always want to use a high potency or very strong cortisone cream, such as beta methasone that you see in the picture here. But there's a lot of different types. You want to keep this in the medicine cabinet and have it at hand. And as soon as you notice some tenderness in your discoid lupus in the scalp, you want to start using it immediately but please don't use it just as needed. You wanna use it religiously two to three times a day and just do it for two weeks and then you wanna stop. And the reason for that is that if you use it more than a couple of weeks, the skin becomes used to it and it stops responding to the cortisone. So again, use it religiously two to three times a day during active discoid uh, flare-ups and then you wanna stop it after two weeks, give the hair a rest and then you can repeat it after a week or two. But if cortisone doesn't work by itself, we can also use another type of ointment called tacrolimus. The, the trade name for tacrolimus is protopic, and this can be very helpful in patients who don't respond completely to the cortisone uh, creams or cortisone uh, ointments. And you just put a very thin layer of this uh, on the discoid lesion, and again, you wanna use it religiously two to three times a day as directed by your doctor. Now this you can use as long as you want to, because the skin doesn't seem to get used to it. Another good way to use it is to alternate between the cortisone and, and the tacrolimus. For example, use the cortisone cream religiously twice a day for two weeks, stop it, then immediately start to use the protopic in its place. And this can even guarantee you better that you'll get good control of your discoid lupus. But oftentimes that's not enough. Remember, you have to remember that the discoid lupus affecting the scalp is due to your systemic lupus also attacking it. Now, some people do have discoid lupus by itself and, and we may not have to treat them more aggressively, but most of them we do need to use systemic medication. So it even applies to people who just have discoid lupus without the systemic lupus. Another important thing to remember is that not all rheumatologists may feel or think that your discoid lupus is all that bad. Uh, it's important to, to, uh, to really let your doctor know that the, that the hair loss really bothers you a lot. And then tell your rheumatologist, how can we treat my lupus more aggressively? Ask your rheumatologist what other medicines you can use that might help out better and that, you're, that you'd like to hear the pros and cons of your choices so that you can make an educated guess on what to do with your discoid lupus next. In my opinion, and in the opinion of most lupus experts, every single person who has significant discoid lupus, even if it's not systemic lupus, should be on an anti-malarial medication such as hydroxychloroquine. The reason for this is because it is so devastating when it causes that permanent scarring, and hydroxychloroquine is just so safe in the vast majority of patients who take it. Don't be afraid of the eye problems that you might hear about, by the way. As long as you get the proper eye test every year, it's incredibly rare to get a, a significant eye problem. In fact, the eye doctor would always see problems before you would note, ever notice any visual problems. You want to make sure you get a test called the SDOCT test and a visual field 10-2 test. If you get those every single year, you'll be good to go. But in some people, hydroxychloroquine by itself is not enough, and we need to use a stronger immunosuppressant along with it. Some that we oftentimes use include mycophenolate, which is also called Celsep, methotrexate, azathioprine, and even belimumab, which is called Benlista. We never know what's going to be the right medicine in any particular person, by the way. Sometimes we have to use different combinations for them to help out, and it's oftentimes a, a trial and error type of thing uh, to, to help out with the, uh, the hair loss in our, in our lupus patients. Some of the things that we can do with these medicines is, for one thing, we can increase the dosage. For example, if someone's on Celsept one gram twice a day, I would go up to 1.5 grams twice a day. Or we might want to add a drug. For example, let's say that someone's on hydroxychloroquine and mycophenolate and they're already on the maximum doses, that person, I might want to add Benlista to the regimen to help out. 
And then sometimes we even need to change drugs. For example, let's say someone's on cell sets at the maximum dose. Uh, no, let's say that someone's on, uh, for example, Benlista and they're on them uh, and it's not doing anything whatsoever, then we can change it to Rituxan and see if that might help. Now, methotrexate is a special ca case, by the way. If you're on pills and methotrexate, ask your doctor to put you on subcutaneous injections. They work better. Uh, you'll get a higher blood level that can, that can help you out better. In addition, we can also give stronger doses of vitamins. If you take folic acid or folinic acid, which is also called leucoborin, we can go up on the dose. For example, 5 milligrams of folic acid might be more helpful than 1 milligram. 25 milligrams of leucoborin might be better than just 10 milligrams of leucoborin. These vitamins help decrease the side effects, such as hair loss from methotrexate. So these are the things that we as your physician can do to help out with your hair loss, but, but you might be asking the question, what can you do? Well, I have good news for you. You can do a lot to help out with your hair loss. In fact, if you don't work on it yourself, I cannot take care of your hair loss by yourself. There's things that I absolutely need your help with. And one of those things is avoiding ultraviolet light. Ultraviolet light absolutely makes lupus hair loss worse. And the sun, of course, is the biggest culprit. But please remember that ultraviolet light comes through clouds. And so even on a cloudy day, you should be wearing that wide-brimmed hat when you go outside and you should have your sunscreen on. Even though the visible light is not coming through the cloud very much, that ultraviolet light is. There's other conditions that can exacerbate ultraviolet light uh, when you're outside. For example, if you're around water, the ultraviolet light from the sun, it bounces off from the water and then it comes up and hits you again. So you're like getting a double dose of ultraviolet light. So it's even more imperative if you're, if you're around any bodies of water that you be religious with protecting yourself from ultraviolet light. Winter. You absolutely should be wearing sunscreen and wearing a wide brimmed hat when you're outside. That snow, it reflects more ultraviolet light on your skin. And even though, for example, this is a cloudy winter day in this picture here, there is significant ultraviolet light coming through those clouds. Even though it might not be as much as during summertime, it's still there. So you need that to be wearing that sunscreen. Indoor lighting is also important. This is an example of a fluorescent light bulb, and fluorescent light bulbs give off significant ultraviolet light. Also, those older incandescent bulbs, they give off UV light as well, but maybe not as much as fluorescent bulbs. And just think about it. You're inside and you have your light bulbs on all the time. You're getting this constant bombardment of low levels of ultraviolet light. And over time, that builds up and it damages the, the cells underneath the skin and makes your lupus more active. And so I ask my lupus patients to wear sunscreen religiously every single day, even if they don't go outside. However, something even better is to switch out your fluorescent light bulbs for LED bulbs. Right here in, in, my, in my office, I'm at home right now, this is a, actually an LED bulb. My family, we got skin cancer at a young age, unfortunately. And, and so I have LED bulbs in all of, my, in all of my, the rooms of my house. But also I'm sitting right next to a big window right here. So I wear sunscreen as well. So even if I don't go outside, I'm wearing my sunscreen to, to help protect me. Another thing that people may not be uh, may not know about, especially women, is when they get a manicure. Like when you get those false nails put on, and, and if you put your fingernails into the uh, into the light to cure them or to dry them off, that light is actually ultraviolet light, and there's case reports of this flaring up lupus. So please don't let your uh, your manicurists do that when they when they do your nails. So now let's talk about how ultraviolet light causes lupus to flare. So the so inside of our bodies or the, the cells underneath our skin, they're actually damaged by UV light and they release their inner contents, such as that DNA that I've been talking about, but also other nuclear proteins. And then your anti-DNA and your anti-nuclear antibodies that your immune system is producing seize your own proteins and think that they don't belong there. They think that they're foreign. And so your antibodies attack and attach to that DNA and causes those immune complexes. Not only does it cause inflammation at the area of the skin, 
but those immune complexes float around inside your bloodstream and it can go to the hair follicles of the scalp and cause your hair loss to get worse. And so that's why it's so important to prevent that UV light from hitting your skin and, the, and going through your skin in the first place to damage those cells underneath the skin. You want to use sunscreen religiously and in, in large amounts. Uh, for example, the experts say that you should use about a shot glass full or more when you apply your sunscreen. Make sure that it's an SPF 50 or higher and that it protects you against UVA and UVB light and that it's also waterproof as well. And then use it religiously even if you don't go outside. It's such an important part of lupus, by the way, that I include it in the medication list of my patients. And I want them to be using it as much as their hydroxychloroquine, their vitamin D, and their other medicines. Whenever you go outside, even if it's just simply to go to the car and, or from your car into the grocery store, you need to be putting a, a, a wide brim hat on. The wide brim hat will help keep UV light from hitting the, the exposed areas of your face. And by the way, a baseball cap is not sufficient. You want to wear a wide brim hat. And it's, you need a really good one so it also doesn't go through the hat and hit the scalp as well. That's, that's also very important. Wearing ultraviolet protective clothing is important. Um, much, most clothing is not very good at protecting you from UV light. For example, a wet t-shirt only has a, an SPF of around, of around 5. You, know, you want to wear clothing that's tightly woven. And a way, good way to check that is to hold your clothing up to light. If you, can see, if you can see light through it, then it's not good enough. You want a more tightly woven uh, clothing to wear. Another trick is to get something called RIT SunGuard. Uh, the company called RIT, R-I-T, they make something called SunGuard. It's a powder. You add it to your clothing, and it actually increases the SPF of your clothing up to around 35. And so that can be very beneficial. And it lasts for several washings, which is really nice. There's a lot of important advice on what you can do to protect yourself from UV light in the sun. And that's quite a long list, but it's incredibly important that you, that you do every single thing on that list. So please go to the Lupus Foundation of America's website. And I put their website here on the screen here. Go there and you can learn more about how you can protect yourself from UV light. You can also go to my website, the Lupus Encyclopedia, and, and look at my Lupus Secrets. Just click on UV Light Protection Handout, and you can download my handout about how to protect yourself as well from UV Light. Cigarette smoking is absolutely forbidden when you have lupus. It's just simply non-negotiable. Cigarettes are so bad for lupus in so many different ways. They contain a, a chemical, for example, called hydrazine that makes lupus worse. Cigarette smoking also even interferes with how hydroxychloroquine works, which is the most important medicine that we use to treat lupus. There's now been multiple studies that show that people who smoke cigarettes, it's much more difficult to control their cutaneous or their skin lupus and also their hair loss. Whenever I get a patient who's a, who's a smoker, if I can't tell, get them to stop smoking, I simply tell them that it's an uphill battle. I can help them probably a little bit, but it's incredibly hard to get their, their hair loss under control and their discoid lupus under control. So you absolutely need to figure out how to stop. There's a lot of different programs out there. If you, uh, if you type in stop smoking government, you can go to, um, to the government websites to get advice. You can ask your doctor for medications such as nicotine or Chantix to try to stop. And also secondhand smoke is very important too. You need to educate everyone around you. They just simply cannot smoke around you as well. This is Dr. C. Everett Cook, uh, Coop. I mean, uh, Dr. Coop, he was our Surgeon General in the 1980s. And he had a very important saying. He said that drugs don't work and people who don't take them. Unfortunately, those of you who are watching this and are taking hydroxychloroquine, I guarantee you that only about 45 to 50 percent of you are taking your hydroxychloroquine regularly. And that's a travesty. We know that our patients who take hydroxychloroquine regularly and get their blood levels up, that they're much more likely to go into remission to include the, the hair loss and the discoid lupus and even kidney disease from their lupus. So it's important to take your medications religiously and never miss any doses 
whatsoever. And I know this myself from experience. I started checking drug levels for hydroxychloroquine in all of my patients about three to four years ago. And then I would show my patients their results when they would be low and about 45% of them they were low. They'd start to take them regularly and they would go into remission or low disease activity. And it's even worse, people who have insurance with, uh, with the government, their, their compliance rate is as low as 15%. So please be one of those people who takes your medications regularly. It's so important when we're talking about hair loss and other complications from lupus. As I mentioned before, some of you are taking biotin, is touted as uh, helping out with hair loss and, and nails and skin, but the research studies actually show that it doesn't help most uh, problem, uh, causes of hair loss to include lupus hair loss. It probably is beneficial in people who actually have a biotin de uh, vitamin deficiency, but probably not in other people. However, if you still want to take it and insist that you take it, it's very important to realize again that it interferes with many laboratory test results. So make sure that you stop your biotin about three days before any labs that you do. Now something that's over the counter that does help and this is very important for you to realize and, th and that I highly recommend it over the biotin is minoxidil. Minoxidil, also called Rogaine, that's the brand name. Uh, it actually, what, the way that it works is you put it on your scalp twice a day and it actually increases blood flow to the follicles and it actually it stimulates the follicles to make hair. But it's important you use it religiously. People would much rather take biotin, it's just simply a pill a day, but it's, and it's more work to put in this minoxidil in your hair twice a day. But this is something that actually does work. You want to give it at least three to six months uh, before you call it a failure because it takes about six months to, to really recognize the full effects of it when you use it. Some experts, by the way, don't recommend using it when lupus is real active, like severely active, and, and this theoretically does make sense. If we increase the blood flow around the follicles during a period of time when there's inflammatory molecules in the blood in active lupus like cytokines, that could potentially possibly cause inflammation of the follicles. So some of the experts say that you may want to wait until your lupus is under better control before you start using it. Many of you have seen this, the television show House, and you've heard the doctor on House, uh, Dr. Gregory House, say, it's never lupus. Uh, well, one episode, it was lupus. However, in my patients who have had lupus for quite a while, usually their hair loss is not their lupus. And this is a very important point of this video. I've seen many rheumatologists make the mistake of ascribing or, or saying that, um, that their lupus was the cause of their hair loss when it actually was not at all. It was due to something completely different. So next, this is one of the most important parts of the video. I like to talk about other causes of hair loss that are not due to lupus. For example, some of the medications we give to you, and, and your rheumatologist will know this, by the way, and this can happen at any time in your lupus treatment, methotrexate, Leflunamide, tacrolimus, and cyclophosphamide are four of the biggest, uh, four of the biggest causes. But also in, in January of 2021, a new medication was FDA approved in the treatment of lupus nephritis called baclosporin or lupkinus. And the, the package insert states that alopecia or hair loss is one of the most common side effects. Baclosporin is related to tacrolimus, so it's not surprising to me that, the, that this is a possibility, but we don't know how often. With tacrolimus, it's less than 10% of patients, and I suspect it's probably the same with baclosporin. But if, the, if one of these medications are causing it, we either want to go down the dose of the medicine or switch to, to something different. And again, like I mentioned with methotrexate, if methotrexate causes hair loss, then we can add folic acid or folinic acid uh, to it to uh, help decrease that, uh, to keep that from happening. It's also very important when I have a patient who's had lupus for a while and I don't think it's due to their lupus, which is a lot of the time, by the way, I want them to see a very good medical dermatologist. And I don't, don't mean a, 
there's a lot of very good dermatologists, by the way, but not all of them are great with lupus, and that's important to remember. Just like with rheumatologists, not all of us are great with rheumatoid arthritis. Not all of us are great with lupus. It's important to find an expert who's good at that particular field. So many dermatologists are, are, are more into skin cancer. Some are more into cosmetic surgery and Botox and things like that. You want to look specifically for a medical dermatologist. For example, up in Pennsylvania, there's a Dr. Victoria Worth. She's amazing. She's a, a lupus skin expert. And if you live in the Philadelphia area, seek her out. Her last name is spelled W-E-R-T-H. Um, in major medic or ma major cities, it's usually very easy to find a medical dermatologist at a ma major medical center and get their help to work along with your rheumatologist to figure out the cause. Now, if you're a person with skin of color, you may want to look for someone who specializes in skin of color because the things that can happen with skin of color oftentimes look very different than what we see in the textbooks or even on the internet as far as rashes and cutaneous lupus go. And you can go on the internet and look up the, the, skin, uh, the skin of color society and you can find out who's a member in your area. In my experience, one of the most common causes of hair loss in my patients, and, and I have a predominantly uh, patient population, and more than half of them are of African origin, and one of the most common things I see is something called central centri centrifugal cicatricial alopecia. That's a mouthful that's even hard for me to say. But this is very common. It, it probably has a genetic basis in our patients. And what it is, is it's, it usually starts in the center of the scalp. So that's where central comes from. It starts small, then gradually starts to spread outward. That's the centrifugal part. And unfortunately, it's scarring. It's permanent when it happens. So it's that cicatricial, that scarring alopecia that we talked about earlier. Of course, this is a mouthful to say, so usually we call it CCCA for short. So if you see CCCA on your uh, doctor's reports, then you know exactly what it is. But it's important to make the right diagnosis because this is oftentimes treated with antibiotics and other medications that we don't always use for lupus. So it's an important diagnosis to make correctly. Another common thing I see in my patients is what's called traction alopecia. For example, this beautiful young lady here, notice that she has some, some thinning of the hair at the, uh, at the front of her scalp. And this is due to the actual the type of hair um, uh, styles that she wears, braiding, uh, using weaves. What they do is if they pull on the hair, on the hair follicles, and actually it can actually cause significant hair loss. Over time, this can be permanent or this can be scarring. Early on, it can be reversible. And so if you have problems with hair loss, you really need to see a good beautician and, and, and start using hairstyles that don't pull on those hair shafts. That's really important. A couple of other types of uh, hair loss that are common in patients who have lupus that's not due to lupus include something called androgenic. Androgenic refers to male hormones and it's a genetic type of hair loss that women can get as they get older. Um, fungal hair loss, tinea capitis, this can actually be due to the medications that we use to treat your lupus. They suppress your immune system and so you can actually get infections, fungal infections in the scalp. If you use fungal, uh, if you use anti-cortisone or if you use cortisone cream on that on this, it will actually make the fungal infection worse. So it's really important to get a correct diagnosis. And again, a medical dermatologist is your best bet to see. So who else should should you see besides your friendly rheumatologist and your medical dermatologist? Well, you want to see also a beautician who specializes in hair loss. Uh, there's a lot of beauticians out there who actually, and hairstylists who, who like to take care of people who uh, specifically have problems with hair loss and who are very good with things such as wigs. And I'm just always amazed today, by the way, that, that how realistic wigs look. It's not uncommon for me to get a new patient and start to examine them and I start to examine their scalp and then realize that it's actually a wig that they have on. It's just, uh, it's just this surprises me at how good they are these days. But you really want to have a very good beautician and hairstylist to help you out with that. Another specialist that can help you is someone called a trichologist or also called trichologist. Trichologists are non-medical people who specialize in hair loss and they especially go about it with the holistic approach. They can help figure out other reasons that you're having hair loss and they can 
identify bad habits that you might be in and, and teach you good habits on treating your hair and your scalp better and helping you to grow your hair back better. So that's another specialist I can help you out at, with as well. But very important, make sure that they're certified. There's special certifications for being a trichologist because you don't have to be certified and you want to make sure that yours is certified uh, when you see them. So in summary, and so we're at the end, alopecia and lupus can be devastating but it, there's a lot we can do for it. Hopefully you have the non-scarring type of alopecia. The way we treat it is to treat the lupus. We want to get the lupus in remission and when we do that the hair grows back. Remember that, not, that, remember that scarring alopecia or discoid lupus is a medical emergency. You want to have a plan at home that you can do when it becomes active. As soon as you start to feel it's tender, you want to have some cort strong cortisone cream and start to use it immediately, religiously, two to three times a day. After two weeks, stop it to give it a rest. If that's not sufficient, ask your doctor if tacrolimus ointment might be helpful as well, and you can alternate between them every, every couple of weeks. In addition, ultraviolet light, you have to keep ultraviolet light from contacting the skin, not just the scalp, but the skin of your face, your hands, because remember those damaged cells release that DNA, your lupus immune system contacts it, makes immune complexes go to the hair follicles, causes inflammation, and it can cause permanent hair loss by that. You want to become an ultraviolet protection fanatic. Learn every single thing that you could, should do, like on my handout though, for UV protection, if you download it from my website, what I recommend that people do is sit down, take a yellow highlighter, highlight every single thing you're not doing, and then learn to do every single thing on the list. And then you can't smoke. It's just... It's just non-negotiable. Please learn how to stop smoking because it's an uphill battle if you're smoking and we try to take care of your skin lupus and your hair loss. And then please take your medicines religiously. The number one cause of our medicines not working is patients missing doses and not taking it religiously. And then remember, it's not always lupus. If your lupus is not real, real active, then you need to consider this possibility and you should see a medical dermatologist to help out with your rheumatologist. And by the way, make sure that dermatologist talks to your rheumatologist. They need to send us notes. That's one of my biggest pet peeves with other specialists is I want them to let me know what's going on with my patients. So always verbally ask your dermatologist to send your rheumatologist a note. And then if you are taking biotin, Please remember to stop at three days before every time that you get lab work done. So the Lupus Foundation of America and I hope that you've learned a lot from this video. We hope that you share this video with others who have lupus who may also have hair problems. I hope that you, that you wrote down a lot of the important points from this video so that you can put them into practice and learn how to treat the hair loss yourself that you're having. Remember that knowledge is power. If you put these practical tips into practice, I guarantee that you can learn to conquer lupus and not let lupus conquer you. Thank you.